Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about if else and it's going to be a pretty fun video. I hope so and you let me know if you like this kind of video because we can cover like this every single subject. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get started. If else. And at the end there is a plot twist, okay? So be ready for the plot twist. A C-sharp condition. Let's take an example. Bool done equals is done, if done, we do something and then after that we always do something else. This is one way to write things. Of course, there's a clear improvement here, uh, which is that the curly braces always go in the same line as the if itself. This is pretty obvious. Anyway, let's continue. If we want an else, you know, like if something else, we do something else. This is pretty obvious. You already know that. Now, the bool done is done. It's pretty simple. So maybe you could do just put the is done into the condition itself. So you just say if is done and then do something otherwise you do something else. Now, this can become sometimes a little bit out of control, you know, like you could have, oh, he's done and he's grounded and you have enough stamina and you have no debuff that is saying that you are dizzy. Then you do something, otherwise we do this and then we always do that last thing. This could be improved. You could split it into multiple booleans before that. So you could have like one is ready, that is like just is done, is grounded and the stamina. And then one is dizzy that contains the check on the debuff. And now your if is much simpler. You have like if is ready and is not dizzy. This is pretty much easier to understand sometimes than this, which is pretty long. Um, so this is nice. You know, this is a nice way to make things readable. Let's continue. Now, conditions is, a uh, condition is branching, you know? Like every time you put an if, you can obviously go one direction or another direction. And this adds a little bit of complexity in your game. And depending on how much you branch, how much nesting you, you do, and this can become a little bit sometimes complicated. So here we have a simple branching, right? We have one condition with an else statement. And inside that if we have another if with another else. So that's already pretty much a lot of branching, but still manageable, you know? But I mean, everybody saw sometimes codes of branching or nested statements that go, you know, like uh, five, six, seven levels deep. That's not really fun to, to work with. Um, so there are ways to improve that. One way is to use conditions as a guard. So guard is kind of like an early abort mission statement, you know. So instead of here, I go back, input is not equal to null and input.length is greater than zero. We reverse the check and we write, well, if it is null or the input is zero, then we will return. We abort the mission. We get out of the function as fast as possible. And if the guard, well, doesn't do anything, then you just continue and you still have kind of the same uh, branching in terms of logic, but in terms of readability, you are gaining quite a lot. And uh, I like this. Guards are pretty nice, especially if you have a lot of guards sometimes in functions. This is a good way to organize things. So early returns are great. Now, if I take the example from before, you know, we could also reverse it. So instead of saying bool is ready, bool is dizzy, and then if it's ready and not dizzy, we do something, otherwise we do something else. You know, maybe you could refactor it in, oh, if you are not ready or you are dizzy, well, then we return. We don't do anything here, we return, and otherwise we will continue. So this, how do we write it as a guard? And it, it's easier. In some cases, it's easier. It's really like very clean, uh, I feel, to read and um, to understand. I like this a lot. Now, let's see another example. Sometimes your code starts like this. I have a method, compute power, that takes an ability and returns an ability package. So an ability package will just return uh, the ability name and it will return some computed value or multiply, if you want, of how much attack uh, this thing should do. Just an example. Uh, you will see why soon. So if the ability is called the fireball and the player has enough mana, then we return a new ability package. I know there are some obvious ways to refactor this, but this is not the goal of this video. This is for later. So sometimes you start like this and then very, sim very easily, uh, very quickly, it can become uh, this. Like, oh, I have a second spell. I have a second ability, a leap. Well, then if it's a leap, I will check also if there's enough stamina and I will return another ability package. 
So now we have the if return, right? It's a, like a guard. And if this is not matching, well, you have the next if return. Well, oh, if you have two abilities, you can also put three abilities, right? Maybe I have also a fierce fireball. I still check the mana, but this one has a magic multiply at the end of 1.2. You know, and while well, three abilities, why not four abilities? You know, maybe I have also a snowball that does just very little damage. Is this going out of control? Like, obviously, from a software engineering, let's say, principled point of view, there, is an, there are obvious ways to refactor this. But here's the funny thing I can go on and on and on, add tens of spells, hundreds of spells here in this video, just under those. And the funny thing will be that you will be able to keep up with uh, everything that is happening and you will be able to understand everything and it's very easy to just change things, to extend it, to maintain it. So it's really readable and easy to understand. It's not the best pattern, you know, it's like kind of an anti-pattern. Doing a string check, you know, who, who, who the hell does string checks like that? This should be a class, obviously, you know. But uh, this is pretty simple to understand and to extend. And it's not that bad of a code, you know, so. And why do I show you this? Well, I show you this because a few days ago, this post went viral from a game called Bellatro. Bellatro, it's a poker game where you can cheat, basically. So you have cards and every card has some multiplier or whatever. And uh, this tweet went viral where they showed the cards.lua logic of that game. And it's a big file with 4,700 lines of code in Lua. And it has a huge sequence, a huge stack of if return statement. If return, if return, if this ability is like that, and some condition will return, if return, if return, if return. So it's, it's a great example of, it might not be the best software pattern, but this is highly readable and it is shipping. Bellatra is a very successful game and they are shipping. So what is the, the conclusion of this video? If you want to ship games, just use a lot of if return, you know? Don't worry too much about how your code looks like. It's more valuable to avoid spaghetti code, which is like too many things depending on each other, than just, you know, like sometimes a bit verbose way of writing things. So if return is how you ship games. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe to get more content like this. Uh, if you like this style of video particularly, uh, well, then leave a comment below. There's many more things in C-Sharp to cover in a fun way, in a serious way, in a sarcastic way. Keep it up and go back and work on your game. I'll see you next time.